Welcome back to Boys and Ghouls Film Review, folks. I'm your host, Sarah Stevenson. This is my co-host, Mike Stevenson. Hi, guys. So tonight we are going to review the other Fog movie that was a remake that came out in 2005. And yeah, we did the other one, which came out in 1980. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was the one with uh, John Carpenter and Deborah Hill uh, that they worked on together. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, say, having said that... Uh, this is produced by John Carpenter, Carpenter, David Foster, uh, Foster, and Deborah Hill. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah. they wanted to come back and revisit things here. I think yeah. because they, they they, I don't think I'm totally happy with the first yeah. film, but mm. I think the first film was better. Yeah, yes. uh, I think it was better. And the fact you don't need to go run into so many details. I mean, and we know that the their forefathers were to blame for incidents and stuff well, and they were trying to you know take yeah. have have a like you know sort of like knife for knife two for two well, for life a, for a life this film has a similar theme to the first film so yeah we're the original this one, say, but it's, there's a few changes yeah, there, but we're in this one temporize it, it and stuff yeah. it does a, offer you an explanation of yes, why in why they chose so like actually, well, they kind of add a little bit of for this one. They select the the victims, but at the same time, the the other people who get dragged into it get become sort of, you know, also victims yeah. too. Yeah. Now, um, do you want to mention about Deborah Hill now? Or? Sure, you can. Well, you can say Deborah Hill. She passed away months after this, before this movie was before, ended, before, ended. After it was filmed, but before it was released. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so she so wasn't a very well laid. She so had health issues. Mm-hmm. Won't go into what it was. That's a personal yeah. thing. Uh, but she wasn't well, but it didn't slow her down one little bit. Yeah, so, yeah and John very, Carpenter did a dedication yes. to her. You know, or told her that told everyone that he thought she, she since they were dating at the time when they were working together on the scripts and they continue working even after they broke up probably okay, i don't know whatever. and so he actually said that she was a great script writer and stuff like that yeah, great and, force yeah and quite different from any force out there yeah so there you go now okay i got my usual stuff now hey mm-hmm. okay yeah like i like to produce by i've done it already directed by rupert w- uh, wainwright uh now, screenplay was by Cooper Lane, L A Y N E, based on the original idea of the fog by John Carpenter and Deborah Hill. Mm-hmm. Now, having said that, now the, the players, as if you can handle people, uh, uh, right here we go. All right. Tom Welling plays Nicholas Nick yeah. Castle. He was in Smallville, another sort of small town type of, you know. Boy next door type. Well, uh, I think they know who he is. Okay? I know. Uh, Maggie saying. Grace plays Elizabeth Williams. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that, that that was the role that um, mm-hmm. Dame Lee Curtis had in the first film, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Uh, Selma Blair plays Stevie Wayne. Mm. That, was a, that was a radio lady, wasn't it? Yep, yeah, she yeah, was. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, DeRay Davis plays mm-hmm. a Spooner. He was a guy on a boat, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kenneth Welsh plays the Mayor, Tom Malone. Mm. Uh, Remember these names because they play a yeah. very key role and in this Adrian movie. Adrian Howe plays Father Robert Malone. They're brothers, I believe. I believe they so. They weren't married. Now, uh, Sarah Botsford plays Kathy Williams. Uh, Cole Hap. Heppel plays Andy Wayne, which is uh, Stevie Wayne's little boy. Mm-hmm. Mary Black plays Aunt Connie. Um, mm-hmm. Jonathan Young plays Dan the Weatherman. Mm-hmm. Uh, R. Nelson Brown plays Machen. I can't remember what was Machen, really, whatever, yeah. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, yeah, well... I oh, think the old bloke, wasn't it? Machen. How about um, the guy who plays Captain Blake in this one? That's well, I'm usually, going now, there's quite a few people. That, 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 usually um, it's all the rest of can slaughter, or um, people who don't, you don't really too much pay attention. No, 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 I'm going to say, okay. Rade, Rade, R-A-D-E, oh, God, uh, Sir Badidja, I think. Uh, uh, sorry about that. S E R B E D Z I J A plays Captain Blake. 
Uh, yes. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. He does a good role too, as a, as a creepy guy, and when he morphs back into a human being. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he looks very yeah, he looks good. T- um, cleans up for a corpse. Okay, cleans oh, up, not corpse. Not cleans corpse. Up pretty uh, good for a ghost. Dead ghost, whatever is it. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. There's a few other people there, but had to read, uh, flashbacks and stuff and different mm-hmm. things and mm-hmm. fishermen and that sort of stuff. Yeah. But, yeah. There's um, going to be a lot of flashbacks in this one where it yeah. deals with the old, uh, the, the, the old far, the original days far and the new days and that sort of stuff and whatever. Anyway, um, now, the good bits and the bad bits. Okay, mm. right. It cost $18 million to make it. Mm. It made $46 mil. So, technically, mm. uh, it made a profit. Yeah, but it wasn't very favourable for some reason. No, so a lot of reviewers The reviewers didn't like it. They thought the first it. movie was better. But it made more money than... Well, it well, probably pro rata probably made similar. Um, yeah. But it still, it, still, till, it still tells a good tale. But probably it, from 1980, which mm. is um, to then, is about 25 years later, the game was changed a bit, and people want a li- want this little bit more action, a little bit more jump scares, a little bit more bloodthirsty, bloodthirsty, yeah. bloodthirsty thingies. And the effects and, got more cool. And I think they lacked it in this telling of the story. Mm. I'm not saying it's a bad. Movie, it just mm. can't go and say that some people were expecting that tad more. It does were more the exciting. The scene changed a little bit. That's all. It yeah. does were pretty yeah, extraordinary. Yeah. Clean the where an old the old lady in one scene burns into yeah, a sort of corpse. Yeah, effects were quite well, well, better than the first movie because they had obviously better technology and stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is good. But you can't rely on technology to carry a film. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, blah 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 blah. I think that's all I want to talk about. Okay. Um, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll leave it to you to start telling the story. Yeah, so the story begins where it takes place back in the 1800s, I think it was. Is that right? 1871. How's that for you? And these men are in the boat, uh, four men, obviously, and they're staring up at a burnt-out boat that's burning away, and... They have a bag of loot in their in their ba- in their yeah, lots of loot yeah mm. and while this is happening someone was they I think it was either I think it was Williams or or one of the guy, one of the guys obviously looks into the water and he gets pulled in by something obviously or and the loot they had in the boat sort of disappears into the waters obviously then we flash to the present where a radio announcer whose name is um, Stevie Wayne is going on about the upcoming anniversary for Antonio um, Island and she goes on to brag about their founding fathers including yours truly hers where she goes on to about how they're going to be sort of um, announce sort of celebrating their um, how they made their island into How a, they developed the place into a yeah. nice country town, a yeah. seaside village, whatever, yeah. yeah. And so that's their plan. And, and unveiling a, a life size statue of their founding fathers. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, mm. the three oh, musketeers and well, D'Artagnan. Well, four. Can see, yeah. well, the three yeah. musketeers and D'Artagnan. Yeah, okay, said. okay. okay. S- Nick Castle is... Um, He's a boat person, which was like the same person we saw in the first movie, obviously, the re- original, obviously. And here yeah. we see him. Um, he's on his boat hearing the radio thing, and he and his men are just getting their loot, the cash, their, their fish, the catch, to take to yeah, the, 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 the bay. Ga- gang fishery. Gang fishery. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. gang fishery, yeah, guys. Gang yeah. yeah, and they, they as they're trading, trading off home, um, the anchor, you get stuck on something. Yeah, it's funny that, eh? It turns out to be the loot that was lost. Well, wait, wait a minute. In, that, well, the, the it boat almost sinks the boat because the, the, the anchor motor wasn't stopping. Well, you mm-hmm. know, and really pull the boat on it, but it dislodged. Uh, what are you going to say? The it was tre- ki- the uh, kinds of it kind of ripped the bag open which, on the loot. Which was some of the treasure that was stolen from the boat, which actually got dropped into the ocean. Yeah. Uh, when the um, people were trying to get away, uh, the well, we don't go into the details away. yet. Yeah, no, obviously, that one. No, I'm just going to say the, the bag for, went down. Yeah. For yeah. the whole town, they think the founding fathers is the um, are heroes to their town. Blah blah blah. And the mayor, I think, Mayor Tom, what's his name, Tom? Tom Malone. He's one of the um and 
descendants, and along with another a woman and named Kathy Williams, which is another founding yeah. father's blah blah. Nick's Castle's is also his father. Well, the four the four people who were naughty guys at the beginning mm-hmm. there were Patrick Malone, Norman Castle, Richard Wayne, and David Williams. So their descendants of the, um, uh, have the curse or founding the sins of the fathers, that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah. get into that later yeah, on. Yeah. Let's not get into the stat part of the story just yet. Also, Why? the mayor also you start had... off with the burning of the boat. Yes, but that, was a, <laughs> that was only detailing whether or not the guys were just leaving the boat or escaping the boat or that... or they were going there to try to help the people. It's just... It's very... Even though that's supposed to imply that they're the villains of the story, but as I said before, um, it's it doesn't show you too much about what they it did or go, done. It doesn't go into too much, but you got the impression that they set fire the boat. Yeah. Anyway, a there's also there, Father yeah. Robert, who's um, he's, he's a bit also, of a drunk priest. He's also on Malone. Yes, who's um, the brother to Tom Malone, obviously, and he's not. He's a drunk priest. He, he by the moment we first meet him, he's he's obviously passed. He's already it. on the bottle. Mm. Mm. He probably knows something, yeah, but, but we don't know. Wine. But unlike in the other one, which he was the, the storyteller to what explains about the founding father, blah, blah, stuff, he does. he's not the person who finds out about the stuff, as we, as we see very shortly. Anyway, soon enough, we meet Elizabeth Williams, who is um, a daughter to Kathy, who's just come back from New York and wants to re- and reunites with her boyfriend, Nick um, Castle, obviously. So they end up driving, and a lo- a lo- by I think it was around midnight, like last time, and their windows on their cars shatter. Like they, like they yeah, like a burst rock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Rock. Of course, um, Nick is confused. Like he maybe thought they got hit by something, but you would have thought something just being thrown into their window. It was. It's not rocket science. Why don't you? In, in some of these movies, they always seem to, as I said before, they try to realize what put realism put realism into why this happened. Obviously, anyway, some other stuff happens. Like later on, one night when his friend, who works for him at the do- at the dock, he takes a bunch of girls and um, his cousin, uh, Nick's cousin, obviously, down to the um, boat for a bit of fun. Fun times. A little party on a boat. Yeah, it's on. The, it's called the green... Um, the seaweed? No. Um, green seaweed boat. Uh, seaweed? No, no. Um, yeah. Whatever it's called. Yeah, it's called green and whatever. Anyway. Green weed? No. Oh, uh, whatever. Anyway, the, as they're partying... Um, seagrass. 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 Yeah, sorry. Anyway. Anyway. Um, something <laughs> begins to stir in the waters, and we see... He, he, he notices something. We're... we're out coming from through the fog, he sees this boat that's silhouetted and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and he, he's the only one who saw sees it. The others that's are a either. Ship. Yeah. Other stuff starts to happen, like, um, let me see, some weird stuff, like, like the girls get attacked inside the cabin. Um, Sean he gets um, killed, and stuff, and leaving our. The um, guy to hide in a fridge, a fridge, in down below. Is that yes, right? down down the hole. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, Nick. Um, mm. later that night, that very same night, Elizabeth, um, kind of wakes from a nightmare. I think, and she said that to her boyfriend that she dreamt of fire and people hating her and stuff and. And yeah, yeah, drowning. She, yeah, she getting all these weird sort of um, dreams, dreams and hallucination type thing. He's like, "What's going on here?" Mm-hmm. More will rev- more will be revealed later. She later on goes to her laptop mm-hmm. in her in her, and she tries to she in her dream she sees a symbol, um, some scales. Yes, you know, Pal- well, like pa- justice yeah, scales, yeah, well, if you will. Yeah, well, you know what well, and. An essay yeah, officer's scale went away in gold yeah. up or justice, whatever. But it's, yeah. take, but it's part of a hallmark. Anyway, yes. she looks it up on her computer, but eventually her computer malfunctions. And then we, we see the words D-A-N-E, which was 
implied it was mentioned in the other movie, obviously. Anyway. Yeah, Elizabeth so, Dane, Dane, the name of the boot. Anyway, so she then hears, sees footprints on the ceiling. They look, they're dripping with yeah, water. water. Oh, Lionel Richie's there. Mm-hmm. Dancing on the Funny, ceiling. Huh? Anyway, she goes outside and she thinks Half she... Ha- she mm-hmm. thinks yeah. she hears a voice, maybe... But then Nick comes along and they go back inside. Later that, the next day, I think it was, um, I think it's Andy. He discovers um, uh, the handle or to uh, an the old brush. hairbrush. Yeah, yeah, the hairbrush. The bristles were not there, I don't think, anymore. But, it, but the, um, the, the, uh, yeah. the silver at casing I, that line, yeah, was made out of was it. At first yeah. I thought it was a, a hand mirror, but I could yeah. be wrong. But it was like, no, well, yeah, it, it looked up because the, the bristles were gone, but it was actually a, a, a hairbrush, but, but, but a silver one, but mm. yeah, still a hairbrush. Yeah, anyway, she, he takes it back to his mum, and she was sleeping in bed, obviously, and he, she tells him um, that, well, pretty much it is a few years old, and she takes it with her to work, and there she continues her you know, her broadcast, along with the stupid Dan the Weatherman, you know, trying to flirt it up with her. Yeah, like even in the doing, first movie. Even yeah, doing yeah, a Zoom yeah. call with her when yeah, they on did, her phone. Yeah, they did. technology, you see, 20 odd years later, they had mm. Zoom calls. Mm. Oh, you would have thought, huh? Anyway. Or something. So well, anyway, Nick back goes back to yeah, goes yeah, yeah. to his um, boat yard and finds the boat, the... Um, the um, the boat is dis- is gone. So he takes a boat that's from his uncle. Um, it, his and they go find check, check find the boat, obviously. And when they get there, the place is damaged. And they find a couple of dead bodies there. Yeah, they find mm. the girls that were attached. They were underwater uh, in, in a net, wasn't? It? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And then they just put, put, brought the net up. They had two dead bodies of the yeah. girls in there. And Interesting. The, mm. And his cousin is. His his eyes are. He had a knife in his eye, didn't he? Something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a knife went in his eye. Yeah, yeah. And down below, of course, they find the other guy in the fridge. Um, f- um, dear old him, in, the guy in the fridge, and we think he, at first we think he's dead, but it turns out he's he's still alive. I don't know how cold it would be inside a fridge. I never been in that situation. Yeah, but there's, but the, there's this guy there, he was a victim too. But they think he's been naughty, so he. he well, everyone's dead on the boat, and you're the only one alive. So yeah. hello, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what he says, yeah, you ghosts, ghosties, and ghoulies, and that yeah. can't happen, is it? No. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Nick cares more about what's going on. He also, they also find um, a tape recorder where the where the guys were recording the thingy wing, dirty old men. <laughs> yeah, you want? Yeah, no, go for and it. so. Dear old um, Elizabeth takes the takes the um, camera from her brother boyfriend, who told even though she tells tells him this is evidence and we should not just take it away, you know, willy yeah. nilly. But he wants her to go and find out if there maybe just maybe his friend is innocent. So she looks at the video footage, but not, but it doesn't show whether or not he that what's he killed the girls or killed um, Sean's um, Nick's ne- cousin, obviously. Anyway, so it shows pretty much that he didn't do anything, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, he's more or less innocent. Anyway, soon enough, she's inside um, Nick's, um, ca- you know, fish house, obviously, and she notices um, on the wall it says Patrick um, Malone's, um, you know, property. It's yes, yes. Late, late, whatever. And she tries to walk across um, a piece of wood, but then she gets falls into the water that's beneath. And she starts nearly drowning. She gets, she has a hard time mm. trying to get to the surface, but eventually she does get to the surface. And while she's trying to grab hold of some rocks, she discovers the journal of Patrick's. And yeah. amongst the ghosties were leading her to it. Mm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, she takes it and she tries to go back to the hospital and tell Nix about her findings, but he seems to be more ca- more or less caring more about the um that if his friend is guilty, then it might cause a bit of issues with his business. I don't know. He's not selfish or anything, but no, I, it's a, it, all the fifth in his business. Yeah, <laughs> because his business is 
in danger. Of, of course, of, uh, some of his people on his boat went mad and killed some people. You're not going to get too many people wanting to hire a boat, are you? No, no, true. But ah. his business before this incident happened is still in danger. It wasn't, it wasn't great. It wasn't it's, great. You're still making money, but was, this, this is really put the cork in the bottle, wouldn't it? Yeah, yes. Yeah. I mean, he uh, has approached the mayor and asked him about putting some money up to the marina to, you know, to... If the thing is that they're 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 pretty much rich and wealthy, but they should at least put money towards other people's parts of their their town to make sure it doesn't go troppo. Exactly. We'll anyway, help. she tells shows him the journal that of and of course um he shrugs it off and she goes down to the basement and there she sees the dead body of of Sean there and while she's you know, not looking. The body rises he from up, its, like you know, any thing. Other movie. And he approaches her, and he grips her, unlike the last in the other one, where she he, he t- and he talks to her, saying "blood for blood" or something like that. And so she freaks out, and of course the body collapses. And of course, he think Nick still thinks. He doesn't. Well, it's, he still doesn't understand. He thinks that that Nets Elizabeth's having a nervous breakdown from what's occurred, but she shows him the journal and they looks at. She looks at some photos on the wall from their late, late great, great, you know, fathers, where it starts off with just ordinary shacks like you know farmhouses, blah blah, and then it jumps jumps forward to a town, meaning the yeah, native. Yeah, mean- if, if in a couple of years I had all these. Buildings have been put in there, yeah. shops and other things. Yeah. Yeah. What so happened where here? Did, so where mm. did they get the money exactly. is a big uh, question. ATM machines or things so. Because they, if these people started off as just independent farmers, well, uh, yeah. they could not have made... The stuff, yeah. they, they could have, the money. have had no, that money. No, no. They may not have been wealthy from wealthy families or anything like that, it's by the sounds of it. Anyway, so she, they begin to read some of the journal, uh, you know, in at the bar, and it said that... The um, father, I mean, the um, father Moan s- co- quoted that he they're about to do something that would they was not too proud of doing. Is that right? Yeah, somewhat. Yeah. But um, and it mentions Captain Blake, and so she begins her investigation at the um, their museum on the on the mainland where it had. Artifacts from that era, obviously, and there amongst them is the um, details of the the coat of arms that she found, you know, in her dreams, obviously, and yeah. it shows that a little bit of detail about it. And of course, one of the guys there explains to her about how there was an epidemic um, when he was Cap- Cap- Captain Blake's people. They got seriously sick by uh, some, ch- you know, when they. They toured China, obviously. Yeah, whatever. And they the brought lie. back um, leoparditis. Leprosy. Leprosy. Leparitis. And <laughs> that they don't have very much records about it because, anyway, they also found out, we also find out that some of the relics from the beach were kind of being um, taken by residents and are being pawned to the um to the museum obviously there's a there's a there's a music box um the let me see the hairbrush is still in possession of of dear old um uh stevie and of course the watch which is found by a homeless man that we see hovering in the background you would think he would give it to the to the to the museum or something or maybe he's trying to find a buyer to it he also shows it to elizabeth much later in the at the beginning of the movie obviously and it starts ticking which could be another indication to that maybe it's starting to to have something's in motion in, in other words i know this oh, I, I should have mentioned this earlier but that's the case obviously sounds good. Well, I anyway so anyway moving on um so um also, Stevie's hand mirror, I mean, the, the the brush she had, turns out it burns and kind of starts catching fire on the um her her, her pin board, obviously. Yeah, 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 obviously. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excuse she, me. She Ooh. then quickly gets the fire extinguisher, <laughs> usual thing, and we see goes the that way, yeah. it has the, the coat of arms on all the pictures her son drawed, obviously. Most of them have a ship on the bo- a boat, considering this is a 
farming, you know, island, obviously. I mean, uh, a, a, boat, uh, well, a marina, obviously. Yeah, uh, but it was yeah, farming, fishing, that sort of thing. It'd be a basic primary producers and that yeah. sort of stuff, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so it shows the for coat of arms, the um, whole, you know, um, legal the justice symbol, obviously. Asking, anyway, she then goes and calls Tex, her son Andy, and tells him not to go down to the beach. And with, you know that more the rest f- later on. Obviously, she thinks that there's there's something w- dangerous coming. Obviously, anyway, but Andy disobeys her and leaves his babysitter and goes down to the beach, where we see the old man, the the homeless man. Oh, I know he's homeless, but he's uh, a beach coma type he's, guy. Yeah. He, anyway, he finds using his mental detector. Yeah. Um, um, he finds them um, a, a rope. I think it's more or less. I think that it's attached yeah, we, we, to an yeah, anchor. Yeah, we, we'll think it could be the end of the ro- the rope for the anchor. He, mm-hmm. It was in the sand. He started pulling up. It was a long, yeah, long rope. And I he, should mention that he fell out to the water. But yeah. it looked like an anchor rope. To me. Yeah. Aside from those things, we also see um, a table set for like it was just set by someone here in the water like yeah like, well, yeah, like yeah on the speech. like a dining room table and yeah. nice chairs and stuff yeah, with candelabras on it it was on the, yeah, it was on the beach minute. and there we also see the chandelier next to it indicating yeah who mm. must have, someone must have put it there somebody did okay. yeah anyway soon enough he sees um the um anch- the rope that's attached to the anchor and starts pulling on it, and, you know, and as he's pulling, he's heading toward to the ocean. We try to follow where it's going to see what's attached to the other end. You see. But uh, as he's uh, pulling, he ends up having the rope tied around his... Yeah, inter- the, the waves like, come up around him and stuff. And, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And we see this fog as big as a tidal wave, if you will. It looks as oh, big. Oh, it's huge. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, soon enough it covers him and he drowns and Andy quickly tries to make his way back to his mother's house, obviously, quick locking the door, obviously. And of course, um, this is where things start getting trippy, where um, dear old Stevie messages Dan, who Dan thinks he couldn't, he could not see um, the, the fog, you know, in on he he sees the fog on his weather thing but she can't see it on her it not there device yet. Uh-huh. but it turns out it is obviously and of course dan who's gets a rat tat on his door the usual rat tats Oops. and he tries he goes to the door and when he's going to it he gets attacked by the ghosts and he burns gets Badly burnt. Yeah, he gets caught on fire. He wasn't carrying a lantern or something. Yeah, he was rather. carrying a lantern. And he drops a lantern. He sets himself on fire. I think the ghost Ooh. helped a little bit. Yeah. And uh, it set fire to kerosene, you know, yeah, or, or whatever they use in yeah. those um, mm-hmm. lanterns. And he went up like a Roman candle. Yeah, yeah. and he gets f- thrown against... Um, thrown through the door, up against the wall, and set fire to the room. All yeah. the years in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She now knows that the danger they're in, so she yeah. she tries to contact her son Andy and the babysitter. But um, the ghosts prepare for this by knocking out the electricity and the, the telephone poles hmm. using the water or the fog. Like in the last movie, mm-hmm. water and is a good conductor of electricity. Con- <laughs> causing uh, um, a bit bum. of. And then to the anniversary ceremony that the mayor and the other people were organising, obviously. Anyway, um, Nick is on the, he's on the radio f- from um, Stevie that her her son's in danger and the fog is heading towards her home, obviously. What? So he gets into the car and he takes he's best friends with Stevie. I should mention everyone sort of knows each other in this town. It's like, um, like. I don't know what... I'm one of those hometowns that everyone knows your names, blah, 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 stuff like that. Anyway, mm. so he gets into the car, he takes Elizabeth, and Elizabeth continues reading from the book and finding out more information about it, like about how these guys went onto the boat and how they, you know, cause, you know... These guys um, got to make a deal with Blake. <clears throat> and and it's in, it's kind of explains more in flashbacks where... Captain Blake, whose his people are covered in leprosy, and he and they're in need of a new place to stay, to you know, to live out their days, and and mm. some of them may be dying from this sort of thing, exactly. so they might need a place to mourn and and die. Obviously, of course, he makes a deal with these four men, obviously, and and in return for them offering a, a nice 
pot of land for them to stay on, they will be giving them a great deal of monies. And of course, like. the deal was meant. They they drafted up a contract, you know, land deeds, whatever they call it, back then. I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a uh, banker. Just an agreement, I guess. Yes, and. Of course, they okay. pull out their guns and said to Blake, where's the rest of our money? He wanted to take all of it. Yes. Not just the amount agreed on. Of course, oh. they take the money and they then ra- they raided their boat. And, the, and they locked the, everybody downstairs. Yeah, including objects like um, Mr. Um, Blake's wife's hairbrush and a music, and box, a and music box that belonged to one of the lepers, his watch. And any other items that come to mind. And then they seal the door with um, a piece of wood. And they start dripping the place with gasoline yeah. and then lighting it. And then soon enough... Wouldn't mean gasoline back in those days. Okay, whatever they li- okay. had lived, whatever fluid they used back then. Anyway, yeah. they then light the place up. And the people start, you know, screaming in terror, you know, dying and being burnt. And some of them come out there, luckily, try- but they... They kind of end up burnt, and then they end up throwing themselves into the water. And they die. You drown, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's pretty much their story, obviously. And anyway, so back to the present. Nick arrives just in time to get Andy out of the house, and and his babysitter... um, She was a crispy critter by now. She was burnt... Well, she was she was grabbed in by some hot scolding um, hands, and somehow her hands begin to blister and burn like she it's, yeah, she, she got infected fire. with fire. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Not bad, good, not bad. Luckily enough, our, so our people get into their car and drive away, and while this is happening, Stevie gets into her car to drive to you know possibly to the house or whatever yeah. and along the way her car stops move, working and she gets thrown into the water by a truck that didn't see her car because it's foggy I well, it is, yeah, very foggy yeah. and as she's as her car gets sinking into the water she tries to grapple with the door handle as much as she can to get out of course we see ghosts in the water you know plaguing her Come and, on. yeah <laughs> and she finally gets juice uh, loose of the um inside the car and eventually tries to get to the surface but the ghosts start grabbing her leg and stuff like that they did but luckily enough she gets to the surface and managed to swim to the surface meanwhile when they soon arrive to to the main street obviously and they head inside the the main building where i think nick's friend who escaped from the hospital still a fugitive if you will and probably accused of those people's murder well not really murder obviously obviously but um him and along with father malone Malone. who he meets later on in at near the dock the you know the marina um they see the boat the um again and of course they meet them at the the where the 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 room, the um, their main room. I mean, the main, the main room where they keep their antiques and stuff from the ancient times, obviously. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Meanwhile, I... while the the fog rolls in, and we see that the statue gets covered in the fog, and we see the statue slowly melting, melting, or yeah, cut, yeah. or freezing up, or Doing what it, something. Yeah, it okay. starts ripping the the statue up, whatever. It, way. it wasn't there been some artwork inside as well, yeah, starting was, to melt and stuff, yeah, and from yeah, the heat, from the, the oil painting yeah. started to dissolve, yeah. and yeah. yeah. Nick and the others, they quickly push the furniture against the windows. And there we see on the one of the walls that was hidden behind a cabinet of sorts is a picture of the Painting. the founding fathers rowing away with... Uh, where, and the painting the of ship. the um, burning ship, indicating dear old... The founding fathers turn out to be a bunch of lying criminals. Yes, naughty boys. And Ooh, naughty I like boy to. Th- boy. And Father Marone tells her that his late father, who died, knew of this. I don't know how he knew about it, but maybe he, his father told him probably. Yeah. And, well, most of the time, everyone kept saying their far, their rel- their descendants didn't knew about the truth. And now the selected truth, people selected didn't people know didn't. about it. Okay. Yeah. I like to think they probably decided to hide the fact, you know, or but oh, kept yeah, it well, amongst yeah, their family. Yeah, members. we robbed these people, stole the money, and built the town. Really good. That's going to get out really well, mm, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But Father Moon, I think he probably found out either from dreams like Elizabeth did, or he may have found out through his father, who who was plagued it, by nightmares of it too. 
by the sounds of it. Anyway, what, his, what his brother disagrees with him. Says his father was psycho. He's a Psychopath. psycho. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it, by the sounds of it, his father must have suffered from nightmares too of the incident, and he's but been plagued he, by yeah, this. Yeah, the mayor, his brother, learns differently very shortly, doesn't he? Yeah. Soon enough, the ghosts start um, attacking the building, and of course, um, and they want him as well. Oh mm. yes, and they soon pull Caffrey Williams through the window, obviously, you know, and, and she gets killed off off screen, obviously. Yeah, and while, that way. Yeah. Anyway, they quickly try to get, to get away from the fog, and we see the ghostly figures. Um, Doc, Captain Blake, Captain Blake sees. Um, Stevie clutching her son and sees Elizabeth there and he looks over the, at the mare like with so much hate in his eyes and mm. soon enough um, I don't, whatever force um, Tom Ma- Malone he gets pulled and pushed and prodded into the um, cemetery. Yeah he, he, yeah, he gets pushed towards the cemetery and all these ghosts appear in the end yeah. from all the people who died on the boat. Yeah, the I like to think that the ghosts were kicking him, you know, as a I don't know. I don't like know. to think. But look, look good. And you see the ghost of Captain Blake just following behind him like he, uh, like I have just a walk. serious talk to you. You're being time. very, very naughty. It's time yeah. to listen yes. and look then. What I have to say. Anyway, um, Elizabeth and Nick follow behind, behind, and they hide behind a few tombstones while the ghosts all surround um, Tom, the mayor, obviously. And Captain Blake presents the document that he received when he was alive that indicated the land rights to for the um, leper colony. And, of course, he looks at it, and suddenly he catches fire, and the document catches fire and starts, you know, starts, um, you know, start burning him alive, obviously. And the ghosts just watch in, you know, you know, pretty much just watching, obviously. And as they're... As he burns up and he dies, um, Nick wants to get going, but then Elizabeth stops in her tracks and heads to the ghost, realizing it would not be over until the ghost got every single one of them. So she approaches Captain Blake, and Captain Blake, he closes in on her, and he takes hold of her face, and he gives her a nice kiss. kiss. Yeah. And as she's kissing, it starts off as, ooh, to get away from me type kiss, but then she it, starts it, it, it softening, and we see that she transforms into a ghost. Of his, the, the deceased uh, wife. His deceased wife from 130 odd years ago. And yeah. somehow we see him... And tra- he changes. He transforms from skeleton to... Back to the way he used to look. Yeah. Before he probably developed leprosy and other stuff. And then Nick ap- reappears, calling out to Elizabeth. As he turns and he realised, oh crap, She's no longer one of us. She's one of them, but she's in period costume as well. Yeah, and she and her husband and the rest of the spirits they disappear, disappear and the fog begins to lift roll and out roll again. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Nick continues yelling out to Elizabeth, trying to find some fragment of her, obviously, but there's no sign of her, obviously, indicating she's that she, that she may have committed. She may have told. Lake to leave the remaining survivors alone. Well, that was probably it. I, and I think. that was her trade-off to give up her life to to Captain Blake, but at the same time, you know, resume his, her role as his late wife. Obviously. Anyway, then we cross over to much later, where the victims of the tragedy of what happened. They cope with the... Um, the survivors. The survivors. The I mean, the victims have lost so many people. The victims people. are already dead. Yeah. The survivors okay. are Okay, the, the survivors, <laughs> they try to live with the the truth that they've learnt, that their founding fathers were total liars. Yes. And the fact that they, what they, they built their town was on stolen money. Anyway, so... It's quite funny that a lot, a lot of... A lot of a, I wouldn't say a lot of towns, but a lot of things were done on mm. uh, not nice. No, uh, that's had, true. Didn't have nice st- uh, start. Yeah, was yeah. Western towns and stuff. They mm. had bad histories and yeah. stuff. Then they developed into something better. Look what yeah, happened yeah, to yeah, yeah, Custard yeah. in the last stand. Custard, uh, Custard, not Custard. <laughs> uh-huh, sorry, my bad. I like anyway, Custard, but not yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, Stevie is at her radio station, and she's talking about 
um, and reflecting how, on it, mm. reflecting on what mm. happened. And her son's there. In the past, in the in previously at the opening of the movie, her son wanted to be, you know, to come on the radio station and watch his mother in action and stuff like that. But yeah. now that she's finally accepted, you know, she's starting to, to to enjoy having her son around more and more. And we see Nick on his boat looking at the journal, the pat that, and throws it into the water. He doesn't want anyone to know about it, obviously. He's probably feeling a bit more sad that his oh, he's sad about it, but I mean, it's, it's in the past, and that it, it, obviously people want to forget what happened and stuff. So yeah. you throw that away, and the past in the past. There you go. Yeah, mm. and then the um, we flash to a grungy old photo from year, from nineteen eighties or probably eighteen. Eight, yeah, where it shows an aged um um. Captain Blake married to his beloved and um, Elizabeth, and we see along with the photos um, him with getting a pocket watch that was similar to what we the saw, one that they found on the beach, and the hairbrush that she got. I guess that's sort of like her wedding, their wedding yeah, gifts. Yeah, 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 exchanging. Oh, yeah, it was a silver hairbrush type thing. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. Then we flash to the um, as a close up to the shot of um, Elizabeth's face, and then. We fade out and the credits roll. That's See, it's not bad. Look, actually, the storyline is a bit stronger, mm. I think, than the mm. first movie, but there's not enough scares and it's too predictable. It's, it's almost like a drama with a bit of supernatural stuff thrown in. Mm. And that's where it's sort of lapped because people are wanting a bit more. Mm. Um, I didn't mind it. Now, I didn't mind it either. But change the subject. The lady who played, uh, what's her, who's it? It's... Um, mm. Stevie, uh, mm-hmm. the the um, yeah, what's the name? Uh, Stevie the, Wayne, obviously. Stevie Wayne, uh, you know, which is underwater in a car. She was spending twelve hours a day mm. getting used to being underwater, so she could do her own stunts. Really? Yep. So that's, that's commitment. It's commitment. Yeah. It does. Um, for some people, it's it's a bit of a it's a challenge. Yeah, well, you can do a clo- up close and personal somebody. You can't you can't stand in, in stand in in all the time. Yeah. So, so she got used to being underwater. She's in underwater for twelve hours a day. They get out to go for get go to the toilet, have a feed, have a break, and then get back in the water again. So she spent mm. all this time in there and got comfortable with it. Yeah, I'm more concerned yeah, yeah, yeah. about Elizabeth's yeah. drowning scene. I mean, in that one, you thought she was when when she did that scene where she's drowning. You know, in the in the dock, the um, in the marina, obviously. That you think that she was gonna. She looked like she was almost, you know, sleeping, drowning there, obviously. But then she eventually wakes up again and, and manages and goes back to trying to get to the surface again, obviously. Hmm. I mean, I imagine I like that type of commitment, obviously. Yeah, and, yeah they're, they're, good, they're good. And, of course, I like, aside from the ending, obviously, where the, you, where the, she transforms into a ghost and her body is no... I would have loved it if they met, if somehow, of course, her spirit comes out of her body and then joins Captain Blake. You want a dead body on the ground. And, we ha- well, <laughs> um, we had the haunting, the new haunting, I mean, the, where we see yeah. um, um, the um, lead character, she dies, and, of course, her spirit joins the other spirits. Um, not so um, not so over the top when you think about it. And, of course, it makes more sense if they're... <coughs> Because a body cannot transform into a, a um, spirit. Here Spirits are, the, the, are within a body, obviously. We're just the... Um, but she got converted, okay? Just leave it at that. But maybe, just maybe, she gave up her her human... Her... She... Maybe... I don't know. I can't really figure out. But she... Once she, get, she gave herself over to Blake, that somehow he kind of turns back into his human... Not his, his dead flesh self, but so it much. It says that she transforms into a spirit. It doesn't say she snuffs it and a spirit comes out of her. Okay, yeah. mm-hmm. just leave it at that. You're making, you're reading too much into I know. her. Okay. I did think that it was interesting throughout. We see them as ghostly skeleton, decra- mutated, you know, beings. Falling apart. You know, yeah, and yeah. here in, um, when after she kisses him, him, they somehow. Both him and some of the other people on that were yeah. on the boat with him somehow go kind of heal from the experience and go back to what it looked like before everything if, happened. Yeah, before yeah, they conducted leprosy and stuff, and stuff like that. Now, okay, here we go. 
Critical reception. Pretty it's, much. No one liked it. There you <laughs> no, it's, it's pretty bad. It's dismal. Rotten Tomatoes obviously wouldn't do that at the time. Approval rating of 4%. Right. Okay, based on 69 reviews. Right. Okay. Um, they say the, the general consensus says The Fog is a so so remake of the so so movie, mm-hmm. lacking scare, suspense, and originality. Mm-hmm. Metacritic gay uh, get. Uh, gave the film an average score of 27 out of 100, based mm-hmm. on 16 critics, right. indicating generally unfavorable reviews. Audiences polled by CinemaScore gave the film an average grade of C- on an A-plus to F scale. That's about average. Uh, the Fog was widely considered an unsuccessful remake of the original 1980s movie. Mm-hmm. All right. Right. Now, why do they make money? I don't know. Uh, the Hollywood Reporter said the remake lacked the scares necessary to mm. satisfy its target audience. And that's what I said. The, the scene had changed. It was over 20 years later. It needed to bring a bit more of the violence, jump scares, blood guts, and you know, it's, you know, that sort of stuff mm-hmm. because they're expecting it because that's what the genre was expecting and doing at the time. Mm-hmm. So they, they, they could have upped the ante a little bit and they would have made a far more appealing movie to the moviegoers and the uh, guys doing the critiques. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Variety said that interest lag between the grisly deaths and worse, none of the characters generates rooting interest. They, no one was, they didn't think it was a strong enough character to say, yeah, go for it. You know, it's okay, it's waiting for people to go through the motions and die. Uh, so, yeah. Mm. And so you no know, one was really happy, but it's still amazing. They made it for um, about 11 mil, and they made about 46 mil, and then, then it was released on home media. So they made money on it, mm-hmm. and it wasn't a bad movie. It wasn't a great movie. Like the, it liked the jump scares and a yeah. bit more action than that with your people expecting for the, in mm-hmm. 2005, but yeah, it wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. It wasn't bad. I liked it. Yeah. yeah, I gotta admit, it was pretty interesting, and I liked the fact that the um, it was trying to convince. The, the the audience out there that that there's something sinister about the founding fathers situation even though it was mentioned in the <clears throat> for the the other fog movie obviously that there was something up obviously oh. but in this one it gave you a bit of a broader picture of the situation and how these founding fathers just took advantage of these poor individuals and and just Snuffed them out and just took the money and run, obviously, right? Okay, somewhat, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I, I should have mentioned this before. Captain Blake is sort of like he was sort of a trade shipment. Ship well, he's a, mer- he's, a, he's, a, um, he's a merchant. So you're, you're trade, you know, in trading, you know, and mm. cargoes and yeah, yeah. import exports. You know, yeah, you know, whatever, and yeah. when he was trading, obviously in Chi- in China, Buck loads of money. Yeah, um, yeah. Somehow his members conducted leprosy and obviously and then all suddenly um him yeah. and his um his yeah. crew and any of the town people he knew got it so he wanted to take them away to a, a new home and to, make your own town somewhere uh, so, away from the pr- uh the judging eyes of everybody else and stuff and we can yeah. go live there and mm-hmm. live our days out there and look mm-hmm. after ourselves can leprosy be cured now and if above to ask okay i'm not a doctor however i believe it's his way not, I think leprosy, um, like I told the other day, there's two types. One is contagious and one isn't contagious, okay? Okay. Now, that's a good start. Now, the other part is, I don't know if it can be treated as a cure, but it, I think it can be controlled. Oh, okay. I don't think you can actually get rid of it. I, I think it's, um, I think leprosy is a bit like cancer, like the souls change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think you can probably stop the change and stop the infection, Okay. And everything else, but I don't know if you actually undo it. Mm, I guess I'm not sure. You have, you have to look up on Wikipedia or something or other. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but um, they in the early days, forgetting the Bible and stuff, because I think you know, Jesus hitting lepers, the lepers back in those days. But we live in Brisbane, and we used to have a leper colony just off Brisbane here in one of the islands. Uh-huh. Um, we had leper colonies in different other places. There, people would go there who got leprosy so they wouldn't uh, infect anybody else in the area. So, and the, and the doctors there would treat them and obviously keep a distance from them, even though they had to treat them and stuff. And they maintained their health as much as they could 
uh, away, uh, segregated from the rest of the community. So, yeah, um, over the years we've had leper colonies and mm. probably still have leprosy in some of the third world countries, mm. but probably not so much in the main countries, but mm. in the, um, the, the better ones, but third world is probably still around. Mm. And once you get it, yeah, I think it's like cancer. You, I don't think you get rid of it. Mm. Mm. It's tragic. Bugger. Anyway, I'm going to rate this about eight and a half. There you go. Okay, I'm going to rate it... Um, and half two, obviously. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was pretty good. It's a good movie. And it could have had a few jumps, a few extra scary, a bit more grizzly, man. But yeah, mm-hmm. and I think that's what uh, mm. I think that's why they um, got a, a bad reception. And they were expecting more. Again, about twenty plus years after the first movie, the scene had changed a bit. Yeah. So yeah, uh, had to change. Um, but the, the special effects were far better, I think. Mm, true. Mm, so yeah. anyway. Where do you get it, folks? Well, I'll tell you. Okay, you can get it on eBay. It is for sale. Amazon also has it for sale and for rent. Right. And okay, when you go shopping for it, make sure you get the right one. one. It is the 2005 version. If they get the year right, it could be 2006 or whatever. Or well, depending when the release of the DVD or the Blu-ray was. But whoever or whatever. Directed by Rupert uh, Wainwright. Mm-hmm. Uh, produced by John Carpenter, starring Tom Welling and Maggie Grace. So use those as your, um, in part of your searching, you can't go too far wrong. Mm-hmm. There you go. No. Aha! Uh-huh. There you go. Mm. <laughs> so that's the fog, obviously. So now it's up to you guys to actually sit down and watch the thing. Some of you guys may have different... You may have seen it and you probably have laid down your conclusions about it, obviously. Mostly about the ending and most of the time it's usually the story and or most of the time it's just the um, lack of scares. In it. Yeah, I think I think it was lukewarm on the scare part, the scare factor and stuff and they didn't have any really dominant character. They, yeah. they didn't have one to re- it, re- you know, someone who was going to be your hero or your yeah. final girl or your something or, or other. Or giving or, you yeah, enough yeah, yeah. reason to hate the, the yeah, current mayor. Someone, in, someone to uh, really hate or someone to really like. You know? yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, like they said in the, f- the first um, how, ugh, first, first Fog movie um, where someone said, I think it was the um, one of the, bro- the, um, the, criti- the famous critique guys where they said the reason that Fog movie wasn't so crummy is that they didn't believe that that they had a strong villain in 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 the Fog movie. Uh, obviously, the Fog itself was meant to be well, the, the, the the villain yeah. of the piece. I think they could have actually had Blake take a more mm. dominant role. Yeah, true. A bit more screen time, a bit more grisly, yeah. Yeah. a bit more demonic maybe, mm. or something or other. Yeah. yeah. So, mm. yeah, something to make yeah. his, his character a bit stronger. Yeah, Instead of just walking around saying, yeah. I'm going to get you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, reason yeah. I've said yeah. this, guys, is I, read it, I recently read um, a bio, um, book, biography, a book about of on John Carpenter's previous works, including the Fog movie. And it mentions the fact that the Fog itself was meant to be the um, villain of the piece yeah. and stuff the like antagonist. that. Ooh. And it was supposed to be like this dangerous gothic type thing yeah, that challenges that the old, story. Um, yeah, the gothic tales of terror where you got a foggy night and, and then there's a creepy ghoulie comes out of the mm. corner. Yeah, mm. Well, there you go. It's the fog is part of the atmosphere and the evil. Yeah, that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, he based, he got the ideas not he not just on his trip to... Uh, he went to Scotland, like Stonehenge, according to him, yeah. and that's where he got the idea about making a story centered around a fog that a, had an spirits sort in of it. Feel to it, yeah. Yeah, and so they go then. <laughs> of course, like he said here in the the fact they had a hard time with the script writing, blah stuff like that. Actually, he's getting out. And of, of course, it had they had a lot of film problems with it, obviously. Yeah, he's having. You know, how many guys out there? How many of you listeners? have been in a really solid fog where you can't only see a couple of feet in front of you. Hmm. I have. And especially when you're driving a car, it is really creepy. Hmm. You can't see a squad. you got headlights coming back in your eyes. you you got to watch how you don't hit your car in front of you. You can't find the road easily. You've got to head out the window looking for the white lines on the road. Hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's really panicky. And then you get out of the car and you want to go and do something, you won't be able to find the car. Mm. It is really, yeah, fog is really, yeah. Mm. yeah. I think the one thing that I liked most about 
this movie, guys, is that I liked it that Jamie's character did not stay in the radio station. That she kind of goes, gets into a car and tries to go and tries to be with her son, unlike in the other original. She stays at the radio station, continues her radio stuff. Yeah, but all her through car wasn't just out the door. She would have had to get out there and walk through the fog to get to her car and stuff, too. True, true. See what the car wasn't anywhere near the uh, the lighthouse. Mm, yeah, along the long stairs she had to go down. Yeah, but then she ends up going on the roof, and then and that's trying where to get away from the people. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, um, we've done the grading, and we've done where do you get it? Mm-hmm. eBay and Amazon. You yeah. go there, so it should be other places as well. Yeah. Um, do you want to say good night, Gracie? Mm-hmm. Very funny. <laughs> anyway, that's about it from us, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. We'll be sure to review another interesting movie for yeah, you guys. Yeah, well, bef- we at least two headers. Like, I get a bit tired of sometimes, but we're mm. going to get something either really, really new or something really, really old. Yeah. Hey? I'll try to find something really, really new, you know, before the year and, is and out. I'll see if I can find something really, really old. All right, that's it from us, guys. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this review, and we'll see you guys for our next one. So this is Sarah Stevenson. And Michael. Thanks. See you guys around on Boys and Ghouls Film Review. Bye for now, and have a good week. Bye, guys.